wedding car please and I'm scared of heights. It was probably one of the most scariest things I've ever done but end of the day I've ticked that ball. And um, again back to laying on the beach in Monte Rosso just a week ago. Just I actually went down to the beach with Warren uh, who runs Clay Castle a few days ago to help him with his, um, his kite for his uh, windsurfing board and um, it was freezing down there. <laughs> like, mate, is this, is this meant to be summer? And he's like, yeah, you're cold. I said, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Had a jump from his shirt on, yeah. Because when I was away, Warren was trying to stir me up, saying that he'd been for a few swims. So he might have been lying. I actually remember the day, a few days before I left, I actually got sunburned. Tyler Gibbs. No, he's gone to uh, see Jim Morrison's grave in uh, Paris. He's gone to do that, and then he'll um, go back to Oz. Yeah, back to reality. Yeah, he came here at the start, and um, he didn't do any shows here. Oh, actually, he played more than he did the Camelot session for more than and um, like myself, he's got long hair, so there's a few knackers yelling at him to get a haircut. That was that was his experience of his life gig in Ireland. Uh, and it, I took him out for two nights in a row at the Keys. I think I'm still recovering from that, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, other than that, yeah, he didn't get to see much at all. It's going to be um, iTunes, Amazon, all that, uh, because it's getting distributed from Offbeat Records. Mm -hmm. um, from Chris Percival, but also be available in HMV in Cork, um, which will be the single and the album. But the dates are yet to be cemented because cemented we keep changing some of the songs and we've remastered it twice. So I'm just ha I'll be very happy when I can sign off on it all. But uh, what you've got today in hand is um, pretty much it. There's just a few things that need to be tidied up. So the difference between a phenomenal commercial album and just a, a very good album. So. I think you should play track number four. This is um, about the bus. First time I was in Ireland, I couldn't believe what I heard. Well, the first time I was on a bus in Ireland, I sat next back to a girl again. I sat next to a pretty Irish girl, and I thought this will be cool. I get to talk to her. And every two seconds, I hear stand clear. Luggage doors are operating, and I was like, "What the hell is wrong with these people? What's going on?" And um, yeah, <laughs> that was what I heard from from Dublin to Waterford, and then again from Waterford. Uh, to you all and um, I didn't get a word in. Every time someone stopped they had luggage that day and yeah, every time I got the courage to talk to this girl, that was it. <laughs> Game over, stand clear. So uh, I wrote this song about sitting on a bus. This will be the single, Somewhere in the Night. That's actually a sample. So it's actually taken from uh, YouTube, so I hope we don't get sued. We're a little bit worried about that song because it's, it's going to be the first single when I think because of its novelty value, it's going to get a bit of attention. And um, someone told me the other day they're going to change the voice of the buses, so let's just hope they don't. Otherwise, I've recorded this song and people go, what's this guy talking about? We're at the moment, most people that can catch a bus can relate to it. So, uh, write the chords first. Get the chord and the melody. Don't, don't, like, I'll, I'll give you a story from my talk. Okay, I was on the way to Budapest, and we had these two drunk English people come in and, um, Oh, you guys have got guitars, can we join you? I said, yeah, okay, no problem. Feel pretty tired. And um, they were very weird, but they got out all these words. And I'm like, we just, we just wrote this song, what do you think of it? And they gave me these words, and I said, well, can you play guitar? And I said, yeah, we can play a little bit. And they had no chords for it, and they just had words. And I think that's what a lot of people do, they write words, which is kind of like half ass poem, I think I'm a songwriter. And it's the most frustrating thing to watch. I, I guess I can uh, compare it to me turning up to a building site and me kicking a bunch of bricks and saying, I'm a builder. It's, it doesn't work. Um, and I just said to these guys, I said, you know, the words are pretty pretty good, but in fact they were terrible. I've eaten unicorns and stuff. I was going to be laughing in the faces. <laughs> Give up, guys, seriously. <laughs> get a real job. But um, yeah, I just said, look, you need to get the chords and you need to work out the melody first. You can't just mumble words over a bunch of chords. It doesn't work. To, to get the chords and get a melody, and for anyone that doesn't know what a melody is, it's the, it's the main part of the song, the, the music that sits in your head. So for that last song, na, 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 that's the melody. Right. So melody is the most important thing. Like some of the best songs of our time, you wouldn't even be able to remember the words. Like uh, Bliss from the Sun, da 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 Who knows the words? Who cares? It's the melody. Yeah. So I think it's all about the melody. There's been so many songs lost over the years that I regret, but I think you know every song you write, you're progressing all the time. So any songs that you've forgotten, you can take the ideas from them and, and make them better anyway. Mm -hmm. So, like I know I've written about five or six um, with the melody and words while I was sitting on the trains because some of the train rides we had 
I'm going to do a you know, third and fourth and hours, and I'm just looking forward, you know, the next few weeks to finishing them properly. And at the end of the year, I'll go back in the studio and just do guitar and voice just to remember them because, you know, I don't want to lose any more. Early 20s, you know, five, six years ago, I wasn't really serious. I was just doing covers and I wasn't really focused on a, a career. I was doing a teaching degree and, um, you know, I'd write a song, you know, oh, well, I'd write a song and then six months later, I was like, how's that going again? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's important to get them down. Again, going back to the melody, you can remember the words because they can be written down. You can write chords down, but you can't remember a melody, you can screw it. Yeah. Thing. Well, well I've, got to go, I've got to go and book some gigs. I've been a little bit lazy. I got back and I've just slept for the last three or four days because I've been exhausted. There was a little bit of partying going on the last oh. few days, so... Um, yeah, the Eastern Bloc, pretty women, beaches, my yeah, voice, yeah, it's a tough life. My <laughs> voice isn't exactly 100%. Well, my friends call me Mick, but when I'm in a professional environment, people call me Grayson. Or, um, oh, hey, you, stop drinking your alcohol. Actually, around, around Europe, I've got Jesus or Scooby-Doo. I don't think people were smart enough to, to actually work out the shaggy part. They just called me Scooby. Yes, every track, all 13. Oh, actually, um, the last song called Big Plane, we recorded guitar in one of the churches um, in town. Yeah, just to give it a bit more of an open feel. Yeah, it makes the little guitar sound pretty big and warm. Oh, Warren and John are retarded. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 they're great. Well, they are. <laughs> no, but they are retarded. Yeah, yeah. Tuck and Gay about two guys running run the studio together. <laughs> if I can make a stay.